Give it up for Miss Maggie Powers, the penultimate one of the evening, not the last one of the evening. Sorry. We need to have some more fun, clearly. Here we go. Let's see. Well, let's all take the red pill. There we go. All right. So back in high school, I used to run cross country. And my coach had only two rules that he asked our team to follow. The first one was don't stop. You could slow down to a snail's pace, but he asked to put one foot in front of the other and don't give up. And the second rule was to always lean in to the hills. Now, most runners, I think, get to a hill and they follow their instinct, which is to slow down and just try and survive till you get to the top. But our coach taught us that hills could actually be an opportunity. They could be a chance to get ahead in a race if you leaned in and decided to take the hill instead of letting the hill take you. Luckily, we weren't just thrown into a race with those expectations. We had a chance to practice. So every week, we would run hills over and over and over. But we weren't doing it alone. Our coach would be there right there beside us, and he would be cheering us on, telling us, you can do this. And we knew it was a team effort. We would look to the person in front of us and know that we, too, could make it to the top. And we knew it was our job to model for the people behind us, to lean in and not give up. And over the years, I've found that a lot of life and teaching is like cross-country running. You know, the school year is not a sprint, it's a marathon. You have to find the right pace and balance, and you have to deal with some really difficult hills that pop up along the way. So I wanted to share a quick story of a hill I ran into recently. And it actually starts a few years ago, when I got to my school, and I found out that my space was a typical computer lab uh, with counters bolted to the floors and desktops lining the walls. And I thought this isn't quite conducive to the student-centered, creative, exciting la learning that I'm hoping to foster. So I came up with some plans and ideas to really transform the room. And last year, my school told me we were going to do it. We were even going to knock down one of the walls and expand the space. So I was really excited. And then at the very end of the year, I heard that actually they needed both of those rooms for other classes. And so instead, they were going to move me to the storage closet. <laughs> and this is a windowless room on the lower level of our school. And I'll be honest, when I found out the news, I was that runner who looks up at this huge hill up ahead and wants to stop dead in her tracks. I was really tempted to give in. But I thought back to my cross-country coach, and I thought, who are the coaches and mentors I can look to in my life now who can cheer me on? And of course, it was my PLN. And I think that's the amazing thing about the world today, is that you can reach out to people anywhere, anytime, all around the globe, and get guidance and support and advice. And so I started sending out messages about what supplies should I get, how should I arrange it, what kind of furniture, and then really that emotional support that you need when you are running up one of those tough hills. And they really gave me the strength to make that choice to lean in. So I started making sketches like this one and bringing them into the construction crew and saying, how will we do this? And what about this? Um, what about these lights? I learned a lot about lights for a windowless room. And I also even brought people who are at my school for a design thinking workshop we hosted down to the space. And I said, give me feedback, prototype in here. What do you think we should do with the space? And I just tried to ask as many people as I could to kind of fill in the sidelines with this hill and support me and help me so that I could take this and turn it into an opportunity for myself and for the school, right down to the ductwork, which is now our new NASA rocket. And so I'm excited to say that this is our idea studio, where I tell students and faculty they can bring their ideas and imagination to come and play, a chance for creation and making and new ways to use technology. But I couldn't have done it alone. I had this team of people at my school, and I had the amazing ongoing support of my PLN. So I share that with you in hopes that you'll pause for a moment and think about what hills you're running up right now or that you see on the horizon. And consider whether you can lean into those hills and turn them into an opportunity. 
And then I want you to think about what teams you're on, whether it's your school team, the Learning Two team here, or people in your personal life. And look to them as coaches and mentors, and reach out to them, so you don't try and take that hill alone. But with a little help from the sidelines and a runner's mindset, you too can lean in and conquer that hill. Thank you.